first off, happy 2020, guys. It's a new year. So one of the things that me and Ryan talked about, because we've been kind of slacking recently with our channel, is that we definitely want to post more this year. And one of the things we've noticed is that when we work together physically in IRL, that's literally when we get the most work done. For example, with all of our projects, especially Fortnite clone, that was mainly completed when we we're both physically together in a room. So ever since we've been kind of separated from each other, that's why the content has been slower and slower to make. So we're hoping with these streams that if there are more eyes on us, then that'll motivate us to just work harder. And I hope it works. It's gonna be boring though, like, for, because one, we are very new to this. I mean, very new. This is literally my first stream ever. You're gonna see pauses. You're gonna be. You're gonna hear ums and a lot of likes. You know what I mean. So, and I'm gonna be really awkward. I think I'm just gonna start just coding some stuff. All right, I'm gonna open up the game with tutorial project, the one that we used in our most popular tutorial videos. I remember the last time I left off, I was I was doing more work on the plugin, the open source client game lift plugin. That isn't made by us actually, it's made by a group called Yeti Tech Studios. I've been working on that because I wanted to add more features because right now, in my honest opinion, the tutorials that we made already made are kind of in, incomplete. I say that because we're not really using the full features of Gamelift. I mean, we made them when we first started this channel. It was, we made that all the way back in March in 2019. So, but I mean, it works. It gets the job done. It'll get you multiple clients connected to a server. So, but I do want to go further because Amazon does have some nice features in Gamelift, such as um, uh, rules and matchmaking so i that's something i want to try to do in our next set of tutorials so just to give some background this client sdk the main point of it is that when you interact with your game of server through your client you have to use the aws sdk functions to do so but an issue was that the only known way was to do it through C++ because the AWS client libraries were written in C++. In this folder, where is it? In this AWS folder, you'll see, for example, this game with folder. This was imported from AWS's public code on GitHub. So what this guy Yeti Tech did was he basically wrapped these C++ functions so that you could use blueprint code. So I thought that was pretty neat even though I don't use the blueprints, but it's kind of nice. Also, it's just it's just a nice wrapper, even for doing stuff in C++. If you just imported the libraries, if you just imported, for example, AWS Core, Cognito Identity, and the, the Gamelet package, it would be kind of a mess, to be quite honest. I mean, just look at lines seven through 22. It's, I mean, look at these include statements and it's just more neat. I don't really know how to put it, but it's a lot. It's a lot more neat. So the current function, right now at least, it only takes these three parameters. So here's how this will work. I can actually, I'll give a little more example. Okay, here. So we import the game of client SDK, and then we basically instantiate an object of this game with client and then we just call functions on it like right here for example and the parameters you input into these game of client wrapper functions are defined by us and the game with client api Th this file the game with client api that cpp file has the wrapper functions essentially what i want to do is so create game session I know one of the things people like to do is they like to pass in properties for their game sessions. And that actually used to be, that functionality used to be here, but I kind of removed it because I didn't like how it was done. 
Fleet ID, alias ID, set game session properties. Yep, that's, let's do that. Okay. I'll just call it game session conflict, because I actually, I actually do like that name. By the way, if you guys can't tell, I'm a stickler for dumb stuff. So right now, our game lift tutorial series had four videos in it. The first two are the most popular, obviously. It gets you a Windows build upload onto a Amazon game lift Windows server. You can make Windows clients interact with each other on the server. That was the first two videos, and those were technically the most expensive way to do game lift because you were using windows servers and you were using on on the man windows servers the next two videos was helped you a little bit because it would give you cross compilation if you're on a windows machine and then you could the the last video in the game lift tutorial series done so far just covered how you would add to your project the stuff you needed to be able to build a Linux server build of your game and then upload that to AWS Linux servers. But it was still on the man though. And what I wanted to cover was, so yeah, the spot fleets. Cause in the videos covered so far, the cheapest I get to is on the man. And on the man is absolute trash compared to spot it's absolutely crazy like i the fact that they even have it as an option just it just i just don't understand and the fact that they have windows is even more expensive windows servers windows server builds hoping to cover the use of queuing so that you can use the spot fleets on linux as well as um matchmaking in game with so the rule stuff that I was talking about earlier. Flex match. It's called flex match. I definitely want to use flex match because I think that's cool. Basically, with your server build, you use a JSON file that's supposed to represent the rules for your matchmaking, and together, it'll just handle. You know, it'll handle which game session your client will join. All right, fleet ID, alias ID, max player account. Those are defaults, getters, setters. We got all of them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was just for one of these config objects. Okay, so now I have to go and add another parameter to the proxy for the game session server properties. Actually, I'll explain the flow. I think I kind of understand it. It's been a while. So basically, in your game, you'll, if you want to, you'll call this create game session method, which is an instance method, on an object of type you game lift client right and then you'll pass in this game session config that i just spent a while fussing over and then this will make an object of type you game lift create game session which you saw here it's this guy and it basically has the same fields as the um the the parameter object that we were working on but that gets returned right because when you create when you call this method in your game it makes an object of type you game with create game session but then you have to further call activate on it to actually start the actual creating of the game session so to speak that'll basically just go in here and then it'll make an object of type create game session request which is built into the AWS SDK. Further call more like legit game of methods made by AWS. And then depending on the result, you'll go to this callback on create game session. And essentially all this is, what this is meant for is once the AWS side is done, it'll get back here. And then from here, depending on what happens, you have to make sure that this method returns the appropriate information back to the game all right guys thank you for watching but for now i'm gonna sign out thank you guys